what is the annual cost financing cost if we would use aggressive fund financing strategy so under aggressive what do we do we have our permanent funding with long-term debt while seasonal funding with short-term debt okay so for permanent funding that is 140,000 multiplied by how much 17 percent so the benefit or advantage actually of using aggressive funding strategy is you would have lower interest costs because currently maturing obligations have lower interest costs than long-term obligations that is 140,000 multiplied by 17 percent we have 23,800 while for the short-term debt we have uh, at an average what we, what we will do right here would be like this 5,000 would be multiplied by 13 percent multiplied by uh, 1 over 12 and then we will do that across all months so to avoid doing that actually we will use the average of 17500 multiplied by 13 percent and we will get that is 17500 times 0. 0.13 we have 2275 so we get the total of this the 238 we have 26,075 for our for our aggressive funding strategy now if we will use conservative financing strategy we would have the long-term and short-term debts financed by both uh, by both long-term funds so in doing this we need to consider the peak requirement in any given month so that is 175,000 so the entire 175,000 would be loaned on the onset using long-term debt multiplied by 17 percent so that is 175,000 times 0. 0.17 we have 29,750 so that would be your uh, financing cost using a conservative financing strategy. So uh, considering uh, the the profit, uh, considering the amount that is invested in this uh, in the company, we would have here that uh, our fixed asset earns uh, twenty percent. That is. We have 100,000 of fixed asset times 20%. We have that is 20,000. 100,000 times 20%. We have 20,000. And for our for our uh, current assets, we have uh, they earn annually 10 percent so at an average you can actually use that 17,500 we add that with 40,000 so that is 57,500 multiplied by 10 percent we have 57,500 times 10 percent 5,750 so our total Earnings expected from the current assets and long-term assets would be 25750 So if the firm's current liabilities in December were 40000 what would be the net working capital? That is, net working capital would be current assets minus current liability. So that is 50000 minus 40000 We have 10 
So that would be for funding requirements. Now we go uh, specific on each items in working capital management decisions. To start, let's go with cash and marketable securities. So under cash management, actually it is necessary for us to manage our cash because it is the most convenient way to measure the value of assets received and assets parted within an arm's length transaction. So how much cash do we actually need uh, in day-to-day -day operations? Ideally, we should maintain zero. So if, unless you have a purpose of maintaining cash in your bank account, you should not be able, you should not be maintaining such amount. So you would only maintain or hold cash in an organization that is necessary for your operations. So what are our objectives in managing cash? So first is we need to determine the optimum cash balance to be maintained. Uh, we need to synchronize or manage inflows and outflows to make sure that there is no shortage when an outflow occurs or there is no not much overflowing of current assets when inflow occurs in such a way that they would become idle. Next, identifying where to invest excess cash. Do we invest them in short-term investments or long-term investments? Sources of short-term financing in case that we do not have much cash available and optimizing our cash conversion cycle. So when there is cash in excess of transactional requirements of the firm but will be needed soon, such shall be invested temporarily in marketable securities. What if there's a deficit or we do not have enough cash to cover our currently maturing obligations? So the following actions can be done. We can streamline operating cash flows or reduce operating expense. So before, uh, before going to short-term financing, we need to determine first if we can not pay yet some obligations so that uh, so that we can uh, we can fulfill our obligation to other uh, to under to other lenders unload non-performing long-term assets if they are if they are saleable then it would result to do, uh, to cash being generated for the company then it is much better to dispose them for now so that the cash to be generated there shall be uh, shall be used to fulfill fulfill our obligations that is before resorting to short-term financing the thing is uh, when we streamline operating cash flows and unload non-performing assets we are uh, sourcing out uh, free uh, uh, cash or current assets that would not entail finance costs because we need to find the cheapest or the, uh, the the source of cash with the lowest cost in this case if on operating cash inflows uh, or reducing operating expense that is a source of free credit actually accounts payable are source of free credit so we need to maximize them the thing or the objective in here in working capital management is to make sure that you would maintain a cash balance that is as low as possible without hurting your liquidity standing and you would you need to maintain you need to collect your accounts receivable as early as possible without uh, hurting your relationship with customers so you would want to have uh, accounts receive you, you would want to have your accounts receivable as early as possible and that is also to maintain an inventory balance as low as possible without actually uh, occurrence of stockouts. Because when stockouts occur, that would be lost sales on your end and that would be a disadvantage as to uh, your relationship with customers. Because uh, when they need your product, they would buy it. But if it's not always available, they would most likely look for substitutes. Then the next one is to pay your currently maturing obligations as late as possible without actually hurting your credit standing the thing is 
when we pay our currently maturing obligations like electric bill, water bill, all the bills that we have, uh, it is actually beneficial to pay them on the last day of the deadline. Why? Because uh, from the from the day from the billing date up to the last day of the deadline, you can use the money wherever you want. That is stretching your payables without actually hurting your credit standing. <clears throat> so what is arbitrage pricing rate? This is the effective interest rate and is computed on a periodic basis, single annualized basis, and continuing annualized basis. So uh, to compute for periodic effective interest rate, that is the net borrowing cost divided by the proceeds. So if you will annualize that, or the arbitrage pricing rate, that is the periodic effective interest rate multiplied by number of payment periods in a year. Then the compounded uh, an arbitrage pricing rate rate would be the future value interest factor of this amount of the per periodic effective interest rate at the n number of periods in a year. A local bank has just approved a discounted 90-day 200,000 12% per annum line of credit to VJ Company. VJ plans to regularly avail of the credit line throughout the year so determine the arbitrage pricing rate so for that we have we have actually the interest how much would be the interest here that is 200,000 multiplied by 12 percent that is 24,000 so the amount uh, the proceeds should be net of the interest so on a, this is uh, on an annual basis for letter A. So we have our interest of 24,000 divided by 200,000 minus 24,000. So that is 176,000. So we have 24,000 divided by 176,000. That is our arbitrage pricing rate of 13.5. 64%. Next is the periodic effective borrowing rate. We just divide this amount, uh, we just uh, rather multiply this by 90 over 360 for the number of periods. So that is times 90 divided by 360. So our uh, periodic effective borrowing rate would be 3.41, that's letter A and then letter B, percent. So using continuous computation here, huh? Next would be the compounded APR. So to compute for that, we have 1 plus, plus the PEIR raised to the number of periods how much would be how many periods do we have here that is 360 over 90 that is four periods so four periods so raised to four so 1.0341 raised to four so actually uh using the calculator that we used earlier continually using it So that is continually using the calculator that we have earlier. Uh, the amount is still present here. Uh, we just add one and then press multiply and then equals like uh, two, three times, two, three, four. And then deduct 1 to get our compounded APR of 18.25%. So that is 18 